Hello there. Uh, welcome back to grade 11 economics. Uh, in this video, we want to look at the past exam paper. We are going to look uh, at paper one and we are going to look uh, at the first question on that question paper, that is question one, with uh, 30 uh, marks. And uh, obviously, uh, it requires you to uh, spend on average uh, 20 minutes uh, with that question. So, uh, question one reads uh, various options are provided, right? Only the letter A to D next to question number, that is 1.1.1.8. Uh, 1 uh, so, uh, you are given the first question, which uh, reads, uh, which sector contributes the most uh, to the uh, GDP of South Africa? And we know that uh, GDP is the gross uh, domestic product, and uh, it represents uh, the total amount of value of, of uh, goods and services that are being produced uh, in, the, uh, in the country within uh, the local economy, uh, is what we call GDP. So uh, uh, the, the, the question now leads us to identify the sector which contributes the most uh, to the GDP of South Africa, but we know that um, uh, the the tertiary is uh, the one that uh, uh, constitutes uh, the greater proportion of the GDP of South Africa. And according to uh, statistics of uh, 2023, uh, the service sector contributed uh, the most to South Africa's GDP uh, uh, and accounting around 62.9%. Uh, so uh, on average, uh, the tertiary uh, contributed 62.9%. Uh, to the total of GDP of South Africa in the year 2023. So uh, this is what we have. So we have got D as our co correct answer. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, it's now 1.1.2. So 1.1.2 uh, reads, uh, pollution is caused when electricity is generated from, uh, and we know that we are given our well, responses as coal, uranium, water, and wind. But we know that uh, coal uh, is the one uh, which uh, pollutes at the air. So according to our responses, of core is uh, the correct uh, response uh, that we have. Then the next question, 1.3, one of the advantages of a central plant uh, economy is, uh, remember, a central uh, plant uh, economy is the one uh, that is uh, controlled uh, by the government. So um, what advantages can we deduce uh, from a central uh, controlled uh, um, economy, uh, centrally planned economy? Uh, so we have a choice, uh, innovation, uh, risk, and full employment. And we know that the, uh, the correct uh, response that we have there is for full employment, whereby we are saying full employment, we are just uh, trying to describe it as uh, the uh, full utilization of the resources that are available in the economy. So we are saying if there's full employment, we are, we are not going to see some resources are being idle. All resources that we have in the economy are going to be uh, uh, utilized. Why? Because uh, we have got the government uh, being the central on pivot, uh, controlling uh, the utilization of those resources so that they are fully uh, utilized. So we have got D uh, as the correct uh, response uh, that we have. Then uh, 1.1.4 is uh, uh, fixed capital, uh, and uh, it gives an explanation on fixed capital. But you know that fixed capital is any kind of real uh, fiscal asset. Uh, it can be real asset, it can be fiscal asset that is used uh, repeatedly in the production of a product. So uh, you see that uh, man, it could, we can also try to, to uh, uh, explain it from the point of view that it is man, where the company has invested in assets such as buildings uh, or machinery. Uh, and also we put other examples. So um, this is what we have in explanation of fixed capital. So according to the responses that we have, uh, if you go through the responses, I would see that uh, the correct answer that we have there is A, which is saying fixed capital is the stock of all those goods that we have a money value. Uh, remember, uh, this is what we have an explanation of a fixed cap uh, capital. So uh, A becomes uh, the correct response that we have. So once we go to the next question, we now go to 1.1.5, which is uh, the South African labor force is characterized by dash labor. Uh, and we know that uh, the a greater proportion of the South African labor uh, is uh, unskilled. So we have um, B uh, is the correct answer. Then moving on to the next uh, question, which is 1.1.6 now. It reads, uh, marginalized groups are excluded from uh, A, society, B, politics, uh, C, the economy, uh, D, protection. And we know that they are excluded uh, from uh, uh, the economy. And uh, we know that... Uh, Marginalized groups, uh, explanation of marginalized groups. These are uh, excluded uh, from the economy uh, due to uh, discrimina uh, discrimination and also unequal relationships. So um, these marginalized, marginalized groups, we are saying uh, they are excluded from the economy uh, due to, uh, mainly due to discrimination and unequal power relationships. So uh, you would see that people who are economically marginalized may not have the same opportunities to contribute to and benefit from the economy. Uh, so this is uh, what we have. So, for example, uh, the issue of uh, 
uh, for example, getting a, a job is very difficult uh, for these uh, marginalized groups. So uh, that's where the element of exclusion is coming in. So uh, we go to the next question, which is 1.137, which is saying double counting is a problem that occurs when the dash method of calculating GDP is uh, used. So uh, we know that uh, double counting is uh, related to the income method, uh, the income method C. So you see that double counting uh, in the income method uh, is when the value of goods and services is counted more than once. So basically, when we're having double counting, we are saying the value of the goods is uh, being uh, counted uh, uh, twice. So how is it going to be counted twice? Uh, uh, this can happen when the value of intermediate goods or, uh, is, is, is included in the calculation of national income along with final value of goods and services. So we are saying the good is uh, the good is being added uh, as a uh, intermediate uh, good and also as a final good. So that becomes a problem uh, that needs uh, to uh, be corrected. And when that happens, we have a double counting uh, taking uh, place. So uh, this is what we have uh, uh, on 1.1.7. Uh, 1. 1. Uh, So on 1.1.8, it reads in South Africa's national income, uh, in South Africa's national accounts, a final consumption expenditure refers to expenditure by, and you know that a final consumption uh, is expenditure uh, by households. So the households represents a final uh, uh, final uh, consumption. So we have got households in B, so it would be as our correct response that we have. So uh, this is what we have on the multiple choice section. So we are going to the second part, uh, the second section, which we are having the matching items, which is a choose a description from column B, but it matches the concept in column A. Write only the letter A to J next to the question number, that is 1.2.1 to 1.2.8. Uh, and um, we are given column A, we are given column B. So uh, on column A, uh, the first, uh, term that we have there is capital widening. Uh, capital widening, and you know that uh, capital widening, uh, this is when an organization or an economy uh, increases its capital stock uh, to match uh, a growing labor force. So when we have uh, uh, the level of uh, capital stock being increased so that it matches uh, a growing labor force, uh, we call it a capital widening. And you'd see that this ensures that workers have the tools and the machinery they need to remain productive and prevents a decline in productivity. In other words, it's going to prevent a bottlenecking along the production process uh, that could occur if the capital stock were insufficient. So this is uh, the explanation that we have with capital uh, widening. So uh, moving on column B to try to see what matches that explanation. So we can just uh, try to go down and see that if you go to F, uh, it leads, increases at a rate equal to the rate of uh, rate of increase of workforce, which is exactly as the explanation uh, that we were just trying to uh, explain. So we got F on 1.2.1. Then 1.2.2 is the Skills and Development Act. Uh, the Skills and Development Act. But we know that uh, the Skills Development Development Act has to do uh, with the uh, with the, the workers. So if you go to uh, the responses that we have in column B, uh, let's just try to see, going down and try to identify which one uh, is correct. Uh, if you go to K, it's, it, its aim is to improve uh, the quality of the working life of workers. So um, the working life, I'm, uh, improving the quality of the working life um, of workers uh, is in line with the Skills and Development Act. So we have got K as the correct uh, response that we have. So we have got K here. Then moving on to the next one is durable goods, but we know that durable goods are goods that last uh, for a longer time. Uh, so uh, according to the responses that we have, we go to uh, the first uh, item that we have in column B, which is A. It is saying um, we have an expected lifespan of more than one year, which is uh, exactly uh, the uh, exactly the explanation that makes uh, the term a durable uh, goods because durable goods are saying these are just goods that are going to last for a longer period so obviously for on average more than one year so we have put 1.2.3 a is our correct response then we go to 1.2.4 is saying transfer payments so let's start by understanding what are transfer payments but you know that transfer payment and uh, this is uh a re 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 this is redistribution of income and wealth by means of the government making a payment uh, uh so uh when the government makes a payment without uh receiving uh, a retain uh, in the form of goods or services. 
parents. We call them a trust to your parents. So they are given um, uh, to the, uh, maybe uh, in, in general, we can say it's given to the citizens of the country uh, through grant payments, for example. Uh, we call them a trust to your parents. And you know that uh, this is uh, a, an activity, one element that falls was under fiscal policy. Remember, uh, the main two, the two main instruments are that are are affected in the fiscal policy. We've got taxation and government expenditure. And transfer payments are part, becomes part of government expenditure. So uh, this is uh, what we have. So we are saying uh, we notice transfer payments in the economy uh, through the payment of grants. So we see that this kind of payments are one-sided in nature, and uh, that is one party enjoy economic benefits from the other. So we are, we are, we are saying if uh, those grants are being given. We are seeing that um, the, we have got two parties that are there. That is the government giving uh, the grants uh, to the general public. So the general public or the citizens of the country are the ones that are going to uh, only uh, benefit. So that's what we. Are, that's why we are saying it's a it's a, it's a one sided uh, activity. So this is uh, what we have in terms of transfer payment. So according to the, to the explanations uh, that we are given uh, in column B, we can try to see which explanation do matches. And transfer payments. So if you go to um, B, it says it takes the form of social security, such as state pensions and disability grants. So we have got B uh, as our explanation. Remember, on B, uh, there is an element of uh, uh, state pensions, uh, which is also uh, part of uh, transfer payments and disability grants. As well. We are talking about grants. We have got grants here, so that makes the explanation are correct. So one to two point five, uh, we've got economic systems, but we know that economic system systems are uh, this is the way uh this is a way uh, for a government or society to organize and distribute resources within a within a country. So when we have uh, uh the, the the element of distribution uh of uh, resources within a country uh by the government or the or the society, we call it economic assistance. So you see that it also regulates how the factors of production are used. Uh, for example, uh, we have got the factor of production is labor, but we also have capital, and we have uh, also physical resources. So uh, this is the setup that we have in the economic system. So according to the uh, responses uh, that we are having there, uh, we can just try to see which one uh, to make use of uh, this uh, explanation. So if you go to the uh, column B, you will see that if you go to uh, G is saying method used by countries to allocate uh, their resources. So this becomes uh, the appropriate explanation that we have. So we put G as the correct answer. Then 1.2.6 saying centrally planned economy. But we know that uh, centrally planned economy uh, is the one. Uh, if you look at the central, central planned uh, economy, we are saying uh, this is the economy that is uh, being controlled uh, mainly uh, by the government. So if you go to column B, try to see which one do matches and that's a central plant economy. Uh, you will see that if you go to a C, uh, resources are allocated by the government. So this is correct. So if you come here, you see that this is the correct response that we have. So we've got C. Then we've got 1.2.7, you say extractive uh, industries. But we know that extractive industries are businesses that extract raw materials from the edge surface, such as uh, raw material gold. And also you can have uh, oil, uh, iron, and so and many others. Also copper can go under that. So uh, we, are, we are going to see that these are being extracted uh, from um, from the earth uh, using uh, processes like drilling, uh, pumping also can be a process that is used uh, to extract, quarrying and mining also. So we try to see according to uh, the responses that we have uh, behind column B, which one to make is extractive um, industries. But if you go to D, we see that industries of the primary sector and all of them fall under the primary sector. So um, we are saying... Um, uh, industries with the primary sector is D is correct response. 1.2.8 we've got procurement, and we know that uh, procurement uh, is the process of purchasing of uh, goods and services uh, in a business, and uh, the business will be, will be purchasing goods and services that they need uh, in, the, in their operations, and say uh, it's procurement, or generally we can rather call it just a process of acquiring something, uh, it's uh, uh, procurement. So if you go to uh, the responses that we're given column B, and try to see uh, which one is correct, if we go to J, it is the steps that are used in the acquisition of goods and services, which are, becomes uh, the correct uh, response that we have. But moving on uh, to the next section of our question one, which is going to be the last one, is on concepts. Uh, concepts and grids are the given one term for each of the following descriptions. 
right? Only the, the, the term needs to be question number, that is 1.3.1 up to 1.3.6. If um, abbreviations, no acronyms uh, or examples will be accepted. Uh, it's very important. Take note that 1.3.1, the resources, uh, that are scarce and that people are willing to pay. The resources are that are scarce and that people are willing uh, to pay. Uh, so we can just try to find a term that describes uh, that. But we know that um, uh, the response that we can give there is economic uh, economic goods. So we can just uh, try to uh, put it down uh, here by saying 1.3.1. Uh, we have economic goods. So we are saying uh, 1.3.1, 1 we have economic goods. And our explanation of economic goods, we know that uh, these are items that set by human wants uh, and also uh, they provide utility. So these are some of the characteristics of our economic goods that they provide and they satisfy human wants and also uh, they provide utility. Uh, and also uh, the other characteristics that we have is that they are scarce. Uh, that is, uh, uh, they, 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 they should have limited availability. So there's an issue of scarcity. So if you look at our explanation, uh, that we have of one point three what's saying resources that are scarce, uh, which is a very important in the explanation that we have of uh, economic goods and that uh, people are willing to pay for. So uh, we have got economic goods, the one point three point two is a pathway to a qualification that is made up of a structured learning component together with um, workplace uh, experience. So we do see that uh, this uh, is explained by leadership. So we are saying uh, 1.3.2, uh, 1.3.2, uh, leadership. Uh, we're having leadership here. That's our correct answer. Then we move on to 1.3.3. So 1.3.3 is a state only businesses. And we know that uh, these are parastatals, uh, state owned businesses are uh, described as uh, parastatals. So we have parastatal. Uh, parastatal. And then 1.3.4. Uh, we try to see, we have got uh, the total value of final goods and services that are manufactured during a given period within the borders of the country. So this uh, generally describes um, uh, the um, explanation of gross uh, domestic product. Uh, is uh, the total monetary value of goods and services that are uh, produced uh, within uh, the borders of the country or in the local economy. So this explains that. So we've got 1.3.4 in uh, the gross domestic uh, product. Well, this is what we have then go to the uh, next person 1.3.5 the record of money flow related to the import and export of goods and services so we know that at uh, this uh at uh, the record uh the moment that we have the record which means uh, it's going to be a record or uh, and it's a record of money flow related to the import and export of goods and services and we know that uh, we have got the uh, balance of payment account it becomes a record uh, so in the form of an account is that a record so on part of the payment is the relationship there that is being a portrait of uh, imports and expo exports and uh in the in the form of the values of those uh, imports and the values of those uh, exports so uh, this is what we have at the end of the day you are going to see that uh, if you say uh, exports minus imports you are going to get uh, your answer is a positive or negative so uh, if it's a positive, it's going to be a balance of payment, uh, uh, a surplus. And then if it's a negative, it's going to be a balance of payment and deficit. So exactly is that. So you've got a 1.3.5 uh, is a balance of payment account. Balance of payment. Account. Let me go to the uh, next question. You say an economic system that combines the advantages of centrally planned and the free market economy. So basically, uh, this uh, is a combination of centrally planned and the free market. We know that we call it a mixed uh, economic system. We call it a, a mixed economic system. So we have got 1.3.6 uh, being a mixed economic system. So this is what we have according to uh, this question. This becomes the last question that we have on question one. So uh, let's not forget to subscribe and share. Let's share the link to our colleagues who are doing great 11 economies.
more typical examination questions are going to be uploaded on this channel. Let's get notified. Let's turn off the notification button so that when we have new uploads, you get a notified. As for this video, I'm signing out. Let's meet again in the next video.